Hey everyone, welcome back to Mavericks, where I talk about everything cycling, gear, and adventure. Uh, today I thought it would be a great time to talk about the bike I've been using for about a year and a half now. So, um, this bike was a budget built. The goal was to try uh, gravel riding, uh, coming from a background more in the classical touring type of adventure. Um, so yeah, try to build something for as little as possible. Something that would still have a few key elements that I was not willing to uh, let go of and that I really wanted on my first build. And to do it, if possible, for under a thousand dollars. So the frame I chose for this project is a late 90s Cromoly touring frame made by True Temper, specifically their OX tubing. The frame is a 58 centimeter uh, center to center. Another really cool feature of this frame uh, was that it's using a 132.5 millimeter uh, dropout spacing. It gives you the flexibility to use either the classic 126 mil uh, road hub or go to a 135 uh, millimeter uh, mountain bike hub. Okay, so the cassette I'm running is a 1146 Sunrace cassette. Um, it is paired to a SRAM Rival 1 long cage derailleur. The crank set I'm using is a SRAM Apex crank set and I am using Chester uh, pedals. Shifters are also Apex mechanical shifters. They are paired with Tectral cantilever brakes. In order to run a saddlebag, I am using Surly's uh, cable hanger. At the front, in order to get uh, housing all the way down, I am using a Tectral uh, cantilever cable hanger. Cockpit is a uh, cowbell handlebar with a uh, six millimeter stem. My saddle is a WTB Volt saddle. Now I have to admit there's only really one thing that is uh, pushing me to buy a gravel specific bike. I was pretty lucky to find a frame that has geometry that is actually very close to what modern uh, gravel bikes are. Um, it is quality steel so it, the, the ride quality and comfort is great. The one thing, however, uh, that will probably push me to invest in a gravel specific frame is the brakes uh, and the effect it has on certain components and the uh, versatility of the bike itself. So why the brakes? So one of the first cons to running this type of setup uh, when it comes to the brakes is the space it takes where your saddlebag usually goes. I did, as mentioned earlier, find a way to kind of uh, go around that problem and I found a bag that was a good fit for this bike, but it does limit the uh, choices you have when it comes to saddlebags. Second problem uh, with uh, running uh, cantilever brakes or any types of rim brake on a gravel bike is wheel choice. Uh, there's not a lot of 700C uh, wheels with a wide um, internal uh, width rim. So again, it comes down to options. This technology uh, is fading out. Choices are also disappearing. So it's hard to find a good wheel set. So third problem, Rim brakes. Um, it's a hard thing to be riding for a full day in grit 
and wet weather and literally visualize your expensive wheel uh, chipping away and buying an expensive wheel set becomes hard to justify to be honest. Another problem, uh, well, another limitation uh, with this bike and the specific builds and uh, using a touring frame versus a vintage um, mountain bike frame is the maximum width of your tires, especially on the um, back tire. So in my case, I'm running 40 C's right now, but this is the maximum I uh, will be able to fit on this frame. All right, so what was my uh, experience and, and do I recommend building your own budget gravel bike? Uh, so I really think building a bike, if you have the tools um, and the experience, Building a bike, whether it's a road bike or a mountain bike, uh, building a gravel bike is a good idea. It will kind of show you if you really need the specific items uh, being built on modern uh, gravel bikes. And I honestly think that for 99% of people out there, building a gravel type bike out of a old mountain bike or a old touring frame is plenty uh, there would be no need uh, for all the bells and whistles that are on more modern and expensive frames and you can do quite a lot with this guy before you're actually tapping out and you see the limits of what this can do. Now, if you are like me and uh, you kind of enjoy pushing the envelope and going to harder and harder places and going more remote with each of your trips, then yes, you will see the limitations of an old frame, whether it's the weight, whether it is uh, the versatility that it offers in terms of the tires, uh, dealing with the rim brakes instead of uh, disc brakes, which we, I have to admit, are much better. Um, then yeah, I think um, it is something that is worth getting into. Keep in mind, almost everything that's on this bike that I bought for this budget build, I will be able to port onto the new frame I will get. So this is not a loss, even if you do decide um, that this is not enough and you want your disc brakes and you want to be able to fit bigger tires, uh, really, all I'll need to do for my next build is get that new frame, get a new wheel set and disc brakes, and I'll be ready to go. There's now even a uh, half hydraulic, uh, half mechanical disc brake that I'll be able to use uh, with these uh, shifters. So really the investment uh, is not lost. I'll sell that frame or build something else with that guy. And really my next investment is gonna be quite less than what this uh, started with. So most of the parts on the bike uh, were bought as a uh, takeoff. So just someone who got a new bike, decided to upgrade some components took the parts off of his bike without being used and then just sold them. So uh, the crank set was a takeoff, uh, the wheels were a takeoff, the shifters were a takeoff and the saddle was a takeoff. Um, I did buy my rear mech uh, new, the cassette was new, the chain was new. Uh, tires and my uh, handlebars were new as well. Uh, brakes were as well. So I tried to uh, spend the least amount possible and source out um, as many parts as I could on Facebook Market or Kijiji here in Canada. Um, and that kept, I think, my that altogether kept the builds uh, under a thousand dollars or very close to. 
As always, I hope this content was useful and um, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. It does help a lot. Um, I will be coming up with new videos shortly, so please also consider hitting that bell button to be notified when your videos are being released. For my next project, I will be working on the Kona and uh, more specifically, I will be using caustic soda to uh, remove this seat post that I've tried for about a month now to remove. Uh, my last try will be to use caustic soda, so please uh, keep an eye out for that video. I'm gonna try to do that and maintain the original paint on this guy. Uh, that should be interesting and something that I've been looking to do a video about for quite a while now. Um, yeah, if you have questions, uh, if you want to share your own builds, please do so in the comments below. As always, uh, ride safe and we'll see you next time.